Shivaya, Om Brahma Mira Striparan Takare, Banu Shashi Bumisito, Buddha Shah Guru Shah Shukra, Shani Rahu Keteva, Sarvigraha Shantikara Bhavantu. Om, Om Hrim Buryama, Om Hrim Gurave Namaha, Om Hrim Shukrayanama. Om Namah Shivaya. Well, greetings and um, welcome to Cosmic Cab 100. This is your weekly astro video zine where we take the signs of the zodiac, the planets, and the houses, and we relate them to you according to tropical astrology with a little bit of flavoring of sidereal Vedic astrology where the, where the constellations are closer to matching. Every week we do this for you. And... Um, <clears throat> Don't, don't be shy about subscribing. Uh, don't be shy about commenting. I love your comments. Um, I'm so grateful for Grateful One, and I'm grateful for um, Triple F in Beverly Hills, and um, I'm just grateful for Valerie, and um, for Rebecca, and all you folks that comment weekly and just appreciate what's happening here at Cosmic Kev 100. So um, like, get the bell notification, share it, subscribe. Appreciating you. So let's talk about this Friday. So we're, this is for December the 16th, 2022, Friday through the 23rd, next Friday, 2022. So um, and Hadzmaneach for those of you celebrating Hanukkah because um, Hanukkah is about to begin Sunday night at sundown. So, um, and uh, the moon will be in Scorpio in the western zodiac. And um, we'll go from Libra, it'll be in Libra in the sidereal. So, what a nice, lovely way to begin the weekend or begin Hanukkah. Now, on um, today, Friday the 16th, what are we looking at? I mean, as you know, this was recorded a little earlier than, than Friday, but for, for today, Friday, we've got a moon in Virgo, and the moon will be in tropical Libra at 11.49 a.m., but it'll still be in the sidereal Virgo, and the part of the sky that the moon is in, in, in Vedic Jyotish, Vedic astrology, is known as Uttara Falguni. Now, the Falgunis... Purva Felguni and Uttara Felguni are kind of lusty. <clears throat> they love the opposite sex. Um, they all contain some Leo. Um, Purva Felguni is all Leo, but this Uttara Felguni is just one quarter Leo and three quarters Virgo. So we're in the Virgo part. Its ruling deity is known as Aryaman. And Aryaman is very bold and valiant and is really about serving other people, helping them, and giving them boons, you know, giving them blessings. So, how nice. And this nakshatra is ruled by the sun, just like Kritika nakshatra is ruled by the sun, just like Uttara Ashada is ruled by the sun. And Uttara means former, you know, because we have these nakshatras that are kind of contain a similar energy. It's almost like they were twins with different purposes. Um, Uttara Ashada has a more masculine purpose to it, than um, Purva Falguni, and it's about the planks of a bed, it's about <clears throat> getting the rest you need, it's also about having fun, <clears throat> and exploring <clears throat> opportunities to make connections, you know, because that's part of the masculine principle, it's like, oh, I'm, you know, attracted, I want to pursue somebody I'm attracted to. Um, the thing is, uh, you have to remember, if you are like a male person and in these type of situations, is that because females have like 3,000 eggs and you've got 3 million sperms a day, um, females are actually selectors. That's why they're more cautious about sexuality and things as a, as a general rule than men are. Um, because you don't, 
they have a lot more to lose, you know, in the old days, um, and even sometimes today, women can lose their lives in childbirth. Um, and so, um, you know, and that responsibility, if you are a masculine person, you know, to just, you take consideration. And it doesn't mean that if somebody, a female chooses you, you have to accept her. You get to be selective too, but you would be wise if you followed this female, the female principle. You know, conserve some of your energy, you know, and um, not just spray it everywhere. But it is like the planks of the bed, upward energy, male energy coming up. And it's also about boons, helping other people. People with Uttara, Falguni, Nakshatra in their chart, prominent, whether sun sign, rising sign, or moon, tend to really help people. They're really of service, and I love these people. They're very giving hearts, and um, long may that giving heart go. Um, and uh, so with that said, I want to, um, I want to say uh, greetings to Kaya, who's a new subscriber, and uh, other new subscribers. I want to just keep you on the hook, and we're going to just, we're going to do this, folks. Um, now, in the sidereal zodiac, Mars is actually in the constellation of Taurus right now, and it's still retrograde, but in, in Western astrology, we say it's in Gemini. So we're going to go sign by sign now, according to the tropical zodiac, starting with Aries, and give you a rundown here. Okay, so greetings, Aries, welcome to your horoscope. Now, Sagittarius rules the ninth house. Ninth house is about the father, it's about teachers, it's about foreign travel, it's about foreign cultures, it's about higher education, it's about getting that big degree. It uh, is also about charitable acts, helping other people, being benevolent to others, you know. So that fits very well with this uh, Uttara Falguni Nakshatra Friday. You know, how do we give? Um, and um, so Mars is in Gemini, and I've mentioned this before, Gemini, Mars being in Gemini, third house, third house um, Mars acts as a karaka, it's an activator. That's a Sanskrit word. So um, Mars is an activator of the third house. What is the third house? Third house is friends. Third house is working with our hands. Third house is neighbors. It is siblings, people we grew up with, people we knew from grade school through undergrad and college. Um, it's very symbolic, I find, of the years of life of 14 through 21 when we're just wanting to learn about everything. And, you know, it's, it's where there's a lot of practice and we kind of make mistakes along the way, but, you know, we do this at any age, to be honest with you, but that, this is kind of where we're, we spread out our wings. This is where we get, you know, we start to think, we're smarter than our parents, we know what to do. They're, they're just old people, they're all stuck in their own old paradigm, and there's a little bit of truth to that. You know, you get a lot of flexibility as a young person, and I salute that, but without, we traditionally grew up with guidance. And without guidance, the people perish, you know, and the sun acts like a light, you know, and, and Jupiter ruled Sagittarius, wants to be like a good father to you, and, um, or a good teacher to you, a good guru. So, um, <clears throat> just as we go through this week here, just notice that. Now, Venus and Mercury in your 10th house in Capricorn, this is a lot of um, career, you show your ability to be creative, you show your ability to be innovative and brilliant with technology or whatever you're doing. You're going to do better. So here's the good news, you know, you're on your way to great things, um, you know, you've got good friends with, or friends that might be difficult, but they're going to benefit you in the long run with Saturn in Aquarius. Greetings Taurus, welcome to your horoscope. So, I mean, I would say Sagittarius time is not necessarily like your favorite time of year. Um, you go through a lot of transformation, you know, generally, especially if you're a Sagittarius rising or a Sagittarius moon. Um, there's things you have to let go of, you know, but I'll tell you what, giving is living. And in some ways, I look at, you know, some people say, you know, because the eighth house is sex, death, other people's property, and birth. Um, you know, it's like, I mean, sex, like a little death. Um, every birth is kind of like a death. But, you know, there's like a release. So there's like kind of this resting. So there's like a real message here. It's like, well, you're going through the eighth house. It's other people's property, other people's money. You're not really completely responsible and in control of a lot that's happening. So the best thing to do is kind of be a good listener. 
be happy for other people's successes. And if you need help, ask on other people because actually other people's money can come to you and can help you at this time if you need help. You know, it's a humbling. You know, it's just like, uh, you know, it can be a little bit of letting go. But it's also, listen to your intuition. Trust your spider senses, you know. <laughs> right now, um, Venus and Capricorn, it's like going the higher path, being generous. Um, that's going to help you because it's in the ninth house. Um, Mars in the second house, just, you don't want to speak too harshly right now. Uh, and, uh, you know, and I love you and I want you to prosper this week. How's that? Mm. Okay. Yeah, I get that. Mm hmm. Greetings, Gemini, and welcome to your horoscope. So, um, you've got the energy, you've got the power, but a lot of it's withdrawn. You're kind of like, maybe you're feeling like, God, I'm not that charged up, you know, as I should be. But, you know, Mars is closer to you right now than it normally is. Whenever a planet's retrograde, that planet's closer. So, there's a lot of misconceptions about Mars. And, you know, the first thing I want to say about Mars is Mars, Mars is Lord of the Earth. So, Mars is about ecology. Where I live, they say they're in Chico, California, they say there's about an 88% pro-environmental pro, pro -environmental health sentiment. So it means like there's a lot of Mars, and I've done charts of people in this area, and most of them have really powerful Marses. Mars is working for them. Lord Mangala, as, it's known, as he's known in Sanskrit, Lord Mangala killed a demon at seven days old, <laughs> you know, Mars' purpose is not only to help with ecology, he's also a logician. He's logical. And he is very constructive, kind of rules architecture, rules physical fitness. When Mars is retrograde, he rules yoga. So getting a yoga practice going right now, so good. Um, the, the battle, you know, it's the inner jihad. The battle is, you know, getting rid of the demons within us. And, you know, it, it takes practice. You know, I had a really difficult time forgiving someone who burned me, and, you know, but through practice and just asking God, you know, please help me just to forgive and do the right thing, I just feel this release, this weight off my shoulders, and I just trust in the kindness of the universe to make up for anything bad. And that's really what I would say for you. A Mercury is in your eighth house. Trust your intuition. You know what I mean? And it's all about other people having the power and money. Don't be jealous. Say, hey, I'm so happy for them that they're doing well now. Just say that to yourself. I'm just happy for them that they're doing well. And know that good things are happening. This is a good time for romance. It's a good time for career. It's a good time for partnerships. Just keep moving forward, forward, forward. Greetings, Cancer, and welcome to your horoscope. And so lovely to be with you today. Um, yeah. Yeah, last week, a um, couple weeks ago, I lost a really good friend who uh, was, his son sign was, uh, was cancer, and he did a lot for the community. Um, Sagittarius represents obstacles in a lot of ways for cancer. It represents hard work in a lot of ways. Um, Moon and Virgo today, um, going into Libra, like Moon and Virgo in the morning, it's kind of like friends, writing, communication, working with your hands, doing a little artwork, and then craftiness. And then this weekend looks like a lot of family. So there might be a lot of family get-togethers. If you're, if you're Cancer and you're of the Jewish faith, um, you know, probably be a, you know, Sunday night Hanukkah kind of get-together thing going down. You know, I could see that. Um, you know, I, I could probably see that for Leo too, but you know, for Cancer this week, um, it seems like Monday is going to be, Monday and Tuesday are going to be really nice power days where you're in your heart, where you're celebrating your creativity, you're celebrating children, and you know, you've got some, you know, there's a lot of work. The holidays are pretty hard on a lot of us in the Western world, so they bring this extra work on us. You know, it's not always fun. Um, just demonstrate a lot of self-patience, and you know, you might have some kind of like lingering psychic enemy, enemy or some, somebody who's giving you a hard time that's not being really forthcoming. And this may not be the best time to deal with it, but always pray blessings on those people and that the blessings will distract them from bothering you. <laughs> Indeed, right? Greetings, Leo. Welcome to your horoscope. So, you know, here we are. And... Um, 
we've got the moon in your second house. Second house could, you know, bring a little money. You might have done pretty good the last couple days, got a little financial reward. I love seeing that. Um, you know, you're, you're ruled by the sun, so sun's in the fifth house. Um, how Leo is that? It's very Leo, right? Sun in the fifth house. So you're just celebrating your heart, like it feels good to give. And whenever we give, I think it is a karma that we help our heart. We help ourselves to do better, you know. We're, we're in this place, sometimes we need a little bit of purification, you know. And um, we could use that little extra boost, that little extra bit of help to um, move us forward as we go through our day, um, you know. That, Anything involving children is extra important to you during this period. Um, it looks like um, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday is sort of like stay at home. Um, and um, as we get towards the end of the week, winter solstice and stuff, I mean, um, Wednesday, you know, Thursday uh, are going to be more about taking some kind of risk maybe, you know, to, to get that thing, maybe travel, um, those type of things. Anyhow, just uh, go carefully, go gently. Also, I want you to watch your health, you know, with, with Venus and Mercury in your, in your sixth house right now. Just, you know, just be good to yourself and, you know, try not to eat too many cookies. <laughs> All right. Well, greetings, Virgo. Welcome to your horoscope. You know, Sagittarius time, you know, we're, we're concerned with family. Family matters, especially our mother. That's super important to us. So, you know, I'm actually planning a visit to my mother since I'm a Virgo ascendant and in, in uh, tropical astrology. I, I mean, I guess I've revealed too much maybe already. <laughs> it helps you do this kind of thing. <laughs> that, that critical analysis, folks. Um, well, I mean, you know, since transiting through your fourth house, what's the fourth house about? It's about family. It's about your home. It's about fixed assets, like if you own property. Um, it's also about the ancestors and where you came from. And knowing that, knowing your roots is, is such a beautiful thing. And, I mean, now that there's DNA testing, you know, you, you get to find a lot about things that might have been mysterious or hidden from you. Like, oh, wow, you know, I, didn't know, you know, until that happened that, oh, for sure, you know, I'm actually Ashkenazi Jew on my mother's mother's side. Oh, this is really weird. You know, <laughs> it was no surprise to my Jewish friends. They were like, Tip. could have, could have kind of known it all along. You know, when people hid, you know, like people are Native American, people that are African American, um, a lot of their ethnicities were hidden because people associated that with lower status. It's just weird how we judge each other. And, and you know, it's a time to put down judgment, you know. Um, Let's talk Mercury talk. Mercury's in your fifth house. Hmm. So is Venus. Heart opening. You are such a lover, Virgo, right now. It's like, mm, everybody loves you. If you have children, they love you. Your grandchildren are going to love you. You're going to be working hard, you know, on your career and what you're doing. And you're going to do some of your best work. And that's really important. So just keep moving forward and being the best version of yourself that you can be. All right. Moving on over to Libra. Greetings, Libra. Welcome to your horoscope. So we've got this Venus in Capricorn. That's in the fourth house. You know, and so fourth house is family. Fourth house is ancestors. Fourth house is your mother. Fourth house is your heritage. Fourth house is your house and your fixed assets. So those are things you're paying attention to. Mercury's there too. Very important planet to you because most of you are sidereal Virgos anyhow. We're like, <clears throat> oh no, I'm not. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we'll get to your soul level. I mean, this planet is just one planet, folks, that we're on. You know, it's a big one, and I and I don't want it to be abused, but we, we've got to think intergalactically now, get ourselves into the cosmos. That's why I uh, I love when I do readings for people, I do uh, personal readings in Jyotish, uh, because it's uh, there's plenty of Western astrologers out there. <laughs> Not information, but to know the real secrets and to really become the best version of yourself. Um, those secrets are, I believe, contained in, in a lot of them are contained in Jyotish, in uh, the Vedic astrology. But with that said, 
Um, Sagittarius is about friends. Sagittarius is about your neighborhood. Sagittarius is about the environment. It's about working with your hands. It's about um, becoming the best version of yourself that you could become in a lot of ways. Because it's an Upachaya house, the third house. You're making improvements. Might be a little bit of traveling involved this week. And um, I'm wishing the best for you. Shine on. Do, do the beautiful work, you know, that you're meant to do. And even Saturn, it's like more like long-term creative projects. Be impatient with your child who may be having problems. Yeah, that's important right now. That patience, you know, love is patient. All right. And uh, the weekend looks good for Libra. I had to say that because the moon's going to be in Libra the whole weekend. Um, Virgo. I mean, not Virgo, Scorpio. Scorpio, yeah. Um, here we are. So yours truly is a Scorpio sun. So. Um, it's like Monday and Tuesday are going to be real power days for you. Sagittarius is about kind of making money and dealing with um, family and finding a voice. You know, a good time to sing, a good time for you to do mantras. Now, Mars is in the eighth house. Eighth house is transformation. You know, how Scorpio is that, right? Mars in the eighth house. And then Pluto is over there in the third house of the environment, getting kind of close to the nadir, you know, getting close to that, almost approaching into that fourth house realm, you know, and so just transforming your view of family, transforming the view of parents, you know, we feel under the thumb of our parents until they're like in their 60s, 70s, and you know, we, we, we see like maybe a little bit of decline in them, and then it's all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I got to take care of these people, you know, I, I owe a lot to these people for what they gave to me. Um, that's part of it. I mean, aging happens. It happens like this, you know. One moment you're this doughy, cute-looking 30-year-old, and the next minute, you know, you're like, you know, you're 60-something, and you're just going, oh, my God, what happened here? <laughs> you know, or older, <laughs> you know, by the grace of the Creator. <clears throat> and um, you have a lot to give right now, and... I, your communication is good, you're, you're friendly, you're a little bit lusty, um, you know, and, and just internalize that. Become in love with yourself, be in lust with your own self in a way of your spirit, of your soul, of your potential, that you're nurturing that soul. And that um, other people in their property, just respecting and just seeing the divine in them, that's what's going to, well, that, that's what opens up everything, folks. That's, that's the beauty way. Well, greetings, Sagittarius, and happy birthday to you. Um, Sagittarius having a birthday this week. I want to say happy birthday to my, my co-worker, Casey. You know, he's having a birthday this week. Um, Barbara Manning, Car Claude Jeffries uh, having a birthday this week. My friend Holly also having a birthday this week. Alec Binion having a birthday this week. Um, I love you people, you know, and... And forgive me if you're having a birthday and I miss you because uh, you rock. You're rocking my world. You're bringing good things to life right now. Um, everything's opening up for you. Now, now let's talk Jupiter. So Jupiter's in your fourth house. Jupiter is um, the guru, you know, ultimately. And, you know, Jupiter's about to move into Aries. So I was like, oh, goodness gracious, I can't, I can't forget that. Or can I? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, 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 it's happening, folks, and it's actually happening this week, so I'm glad I caught it. Um, Jupiter moves into Aries 6.32 a.m. on Tuesday. Wow, so talk about a nice Mars day for you. So, like, Jupiter and Aries is going to open us up to brand new possibilities, and it's going to um, open your heart. Open your heart to the idea of having children, open your heart to new creative projects, open your heart to seeing yourself as a teacher and a higher learner. Woo! Bravo! Okay. <laughs> Greetings Capricorn. <laughs> Greetings Capricorn and welcome to your horoscope. So, so you've got these three, guru, three gra grahas in your chart. You've got Venus, you've got Pluto, and you've got Mercury there. So Mercury's given us technology, information, curiosity, kind of a youthfulness. Venus is like talking about our needs and our creativity and our uh, ability to have like sensual experiences and greater connections. And then Pluto 
is like saying, you know, we've got to change the way we look at this earth. And I, I was listening to a show while I was on my way here called New Dimensions. And it's about science and spirituality. And this one guy who was a scientist says, like, putting iron in the ocean creates more plankton, creates more life, it fights CO2, it does all these wonderful things. I thought, oh my God, nobody thought of this before. You know, and, and so there's like this, the, this beauty way of new information's coming. It's not hopeless, folks. I really want you to know that, that we can be good to the earth and good things are going to happen. So um, Capricorn, that's your mission, is to transform this earth, be good to this earth. And um, Saturn in the second house, you know, you're... You're dealing with issues involving family, maybe dental work or, you know, jaw or neck stuff and, um, you know, the slow money and that's okay. Everything is going to work out fine. I just want you to know that. Um, Neptune and Jupiter together in the third house. It's like, what kind of company do you keep? You know, are you, you hanging out with spiritual people or are you hanging out with druggies and alcoholics? You know, it's time to stop hanging out with the druggies and alcoholics. I mean, if they're former alcoholic on path of spirituality totally sophic that's fine you can encourage one another helping people to get off drugs or moderate whatever use they're doing I mean that's okay but really being in a sophic place I mean satisfied purified where you don't need alcohol where you don't need drugs you're like I'm I'm gonna deal with the, the raw inner me and some people are in a lot of pain and that's not really necessarily possible completely on, for all kinds of reasons, so I don't want to condemn anybody here, but keeping better company, like who's motivating you to be in a better place, because you're like those people you associate with, so, and even if you can't, try and bring out the best qualities, try to recognize good qualities in people and encourage them to, to demonstrate those qualities, whether it's your siblings, whether it's your close friends, what you write down with, write a gratitude journal, all of this is going to help you, Capricorn. All right. Greetings, Aquarius. Welcome to your horoscope. So glad you're here. No, this is not an easy time. I admit, you're right. You know, this. You know, you're working a little harder to get to that place you want to be at, and I respect that completely. Uh, Sagittarius time is enjoyable because it's sort of a party. It's a lot of socializing. It's a lot of getting together with people. I mean, one of the the dangers of the eleventh house is the whole politics. You know, and and we don't really. I don't think there's any country, unless it's super small or something, that's really completely free, especially because corporations want to run everything. They want the leaders to make it easy for them to make money, and they don't really give a rat's ass about the little people. <laughs> you know, I, there, I said it, okay? Um, a real wise leader cares a lot about the little people. Um, and, you know, it's not just people who are marginalized by gender or race or... People are just marginalized mostly because they're poor, okay? Those are the most marginalized people. They don't have stuff, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just put myself out there. There's other reasons people get marginalized, but let's get to the root of it. Well, Mula Nakshatra on you, because that's where the new moon's going to be on uh, Friday night, a week from now. Mula, the root, you know? And, and so um, we want to get to that root truth, you know? Uh, lesson to retreat, beat us down <laughs> with more calamities. Yeah, and we want to heal people, you know. That's what we're, we're really moving towards. Um, so, um, you know, you're going to make some money. You're going to do good this week. Um, and you're just trying to stabilize yourself in what's kind of an ungrounded situation. And the best thing you can do is just practice meditation, prayer, yoga, you know, physical fitness, staying in touch with your kids, especially if you have male children that have had some problems lately. Um, really give them an extra dose of love and guidance right now. Um, I mean, definitely your female children too, but you know, the, I don't see a lot of positive upliftment right now for them to have guidance on how to be the way we want them to be in society, you know? And that's more important than telling them what not to do and what's bad about them. You know, we don't learn by people telling us what's bad about us. We learn by positive encouragement. So keep on encouraging. Stop all the discouraging <laughs> and positive urging. <laughs> um, yeah, greetings, Pisces. Welcome to your horoscope. So you've got this elixir of uh, spirituality available to you, and it really requires an open-mindedness. 
you're the person that wanted to go along with this. You're also the person that didn't want to go along with this. There's no sign better than you that embraces all things. I'm going to give a shout out to a, a Pisces friend who's both a Vedic Pisces and a tropical Pisces named Bob. And Bob ha is a, you know, he's a musician and, you know, he has, one thing he has, like I really love, is he has, this, he has an older wife and he has complete adoration and devotion to her in just such a beautiful way. It was like, God, you know, the way that Bob loves Trish is like such a beautiful thing. And I just think of Pisces, you know, is where Venus gets exalted, you know, and there's this merging that love is surrender. Love is like a drug, you know, even if, <laughs> you know, uh, what's his name from, um, oh God, that, that band, Perry, <laughs> what it says it, you know, it is, you know, it, because it, it requires surrender. It doesn't require analysis. When we surrender to love, it is, woo. That's, you know, when, when a birth happens, we, we surrender to birth. You don't force a birth. You know, everything is about, ultimately, godliness, gentleness, all the higher qualities are going to be about surrender. Now, um, Sagittarius time for Pisces is how we perform what our dharma is and our, and our karma to the outside world, to the public. How do we work with that? How do we bring out our best talents and skills? And then some of those will go into, you know, the 11th house where we socialize with people, where we have our friends, our older siblings, people that benefit us. We've got Venus and Mercury there. It's kind of a nice little party there to kind of encourage us. We'll make a nice Hanukkah party or solstice party this week and um, keeping it all aboard. Keeping it real, you know, dissolving the illusions and being generous. And, you know, it looks kind of romantic today. It looks like it could be kind of a deep weekend. But a lot of good fortune for Pisces on Monday and Tuesday this week. I love you people. I thank you for being here. I appreciate you for sharing this video. I appreciate you for subscribing, for liking, and, and your comments. I'm looking forward to getting to know each of you in a better way. I so appreciate you. Om Shanti 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 Om Tatsat